just the you know just the the whole atmosphere was was amazing and i don't think in tennis for a british player to play on center court at wimbledon with that with that sort of atmosphere i know it can't get any better Will the centre court ever be the same? Peter, Paul Harhouse said in the uh, press conference that he didn't, the crowd didn't affect his play that much. I, I can't believe that, having watched that again. Well, he's a professional, and obviously he's not going to give any excuses, but uh, he wouldn't be a human being if that crowd didn't affect him in some way because uh, it was loud out there. It really was. It was like a, a Davis Cup match in, in Davis Cup final, almost like those Davis Cup matches we saw from, what, France last year mm -hmm. or Sweden in... Uh, the crowd had to have accounted for a number of points there. What about Henman, though? He, after losing that first set, where it got a bit shaky towards the end, didn't it? He had his set points. I mean, he did well to maintain his concentration. Belief. Well, I think that's the, the one strength that everyone agrees on with Tim is that, you know, he's a gamer. He's a money player, and, and uh, even if he's not feeling that great on the day, you know he's going to mentally be there and, uh, when it counts. And, and, uh, and he certainly was today. You've obviously practiced with him quite a lot and seen him play. How would you compare him this year to last year at Wimbledon? Oh, I think he's a different guy, totally. I think last year uh, he sort of was bursting onto the scene, really. And, and this year he's been around for, well, for a year expecting to do well. And he's consolidated it. And, and it shows in the way the other players look at him. and, and uh, I think he's here to try and win the tournament and, and thinks he has a good chance. Well, what about his uh, next round? Defending champion Richard Krychek. I mean, in some ways, will Tim have to serve better than he did today? I think so. I think that uh, uh, Krychek obviously is in, in good form, and, and uh, if he plays anything like he did last year, he's going to be extremely difficult to beat. But uh, then again, it, every day is a new day, and he's got a shot. It certainly has. Well, moving on now, and in the ladies' championships, uh, Britain's Karen Cross was out on court again. She hadn't been given a wild card into the tournament, uh, but she'd played her way through the tough qualifying competition to reach the third round, where she met Eva Maioli, the world number four and the French Open champion. But Maioli was in trouble early in the match. She was leading 3-2 when she strained her back while stretching for a low volley and called the trainer to court for treatment. Cross could only look on as Maioli was in obvious pain and it was doubtful whether she would ever continue. But she did, but Cross kept her concentration. She took advantage and claimed the first set, six games to four. Game and first set, Miss Cross. Six games to four. The Devon girl then raced to a 5-2 lead in the second and victory was there for the taking as she reached match point. And her chance was gone as Maioli raised her game and turned the match around. She won the second set 7-6 and then in the third when leading 5-4 she had match point. So Maioli goes through to round four but Karen Cross, well she learned a harsh lesson today but must be proud of her performances here at Wimbledon. So what does this Wimbledon mean to you? What's it done for you, do you oh, think? It's great. I mean, it's been such a, a huge turnaround. I mean, before this tournament, I wasn't having my best of years, and this really has been terrific. I mean, my ranking's jumped up now. I'm going to be ranked about 147, and, you know, I'm just going <laughs> to keep working hard and see what happens from now on, and the aim is to perhaps get into Wimbledon on merit next year. So, and playing someone ranked so, so high and getting so close to them, surely, sort of confidence-wise? Yeah, that, that was a lot for my confidence. Um, also, I know I've won five matches in this tournament, five good matches, all players ranked a lot higher than me. So I'll take that from this tournament and go away and be happy with myself. Well, she certainly played well. Her ranking has improved and she'll now be in some big tournaments. We wish her well. Well, there were four other British players in action today. Gary Richardson was following their progress. Well, if you fancy a flutter on Greg Rosetsky, he's 8-1 to one with the bookmakers tonight to win the championship. In an all-British encounter, Greg met Andrew Richardson. It proved to be a pretty routine workout, with Rosetsky winning in three sets. 
Rosetsky once again, though, suffering with a back injury, picked up yesterday. And the problem flared up again today. It's still a little bit sore, but um, it's more for protection at the moment. I mean, yesterday was really sore. It was... Uh, it wasn't too much fun. If it wasn't Wimbledon, I don't know if I would have played, but uh, being Wimbledon, you have to go for it and try your best. Mark Petchy kept the British bandwagon rolling in style. His victory over Tommy Haas in three sets ensured Britain had four men in the third round for the first time in the open era. Petchy thrilled to bits to be in round three. Now, though, the daunting prospect of Boris Becker. It's a dream to play people like that. That's what tennis is all about for me, is to play the top guys. I mean, that's, that's why I play, is, is to sort of play you know, Becker, Edberg, uh, Sampras, um, you know, I can go and I've played a lot of tournaments where no one else would have heard of against people no one will he hear of. Um, and so, you know, this is a household name and uh, it, it should be a lot of fun for me. Lorna Woodruff, nearest to the camera, was hoping to retire Judith Wiesner early, but it didn't work out like that. The experienced Austrian is playing her last Wimbledon, but she lives to fight another day after defeating the British girl in two sets. So a mixed day in a way for the British players, but good news really in the men's, Rosedsky through, Petchy through. Sorry for Andrew Richardson, but let's talk about Rosedsky. As Gary said there, eight to one to take the title. Well, he's in the, the bottom half of the draw, which really is You've been having up. a look at that, haven't you? Well, I have, yeah, and, and uh, there are no seeds in Greg's quarter to, to get through to the semi-final, so uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't be the guy to get through there, and, and once you're in the semi-final, anything can happen. And he's oozing confidence at the moment, isn't he? Well, he should be. Won Nottingham last week and, and nearly won Queens the week before. Nobody wants to return that serve. I mean, on, when he's on his game, his, cern is, his serve is unreturnable. It really is. Uh, well, uh, Rosetsky through, Petchy through and Henman. That's uh, the British men. But uh, now Gary rounds up the rest of the day's results. It's been a day when the seeds were swept away. Amanda Kurtzer was well beaten by Patricia Hiboulet. Kurtzer came into the tournament with high hopes, having reached the semi-finals in Paris. But today, she won only three games. Conchita Martinez continues to struggle. The 1994 champion, a number 10 seed, lost to Helena Sokova. Martinez, who hasn't won a tournament in more than a year, lost 6-4, 6-2. Among other seeds to play no further part, big serving Brenda Schultz McCarthy, the number 14, lost to Belgian Sabine Appelmans, the score 6 2 6 3. <laughs> Things look to be going well for the number 16, Barbara Paulus, but despite losing the first set, Naoko Kijimuta fought back to win 5 7 6 3 6 3. Lindsay Davenport, the number five seed, lost in the second round last year, and she's tumbled out at the same stage this year. There'll be a new women's champion at Wimbledon this year. Could it be Monica Seles? Today, she eventually overcame Christina Brandy, who was a set-up overnight. Sellers, though, slugged it out to take the next two sets. The score, 6-3, 6-3. Jana Novotna, the number three seed, met Elena Likotseva. She won the first set easily, 6-1, then contrived to drop the next set, 6-4, eventually regaining her composure to take the final set and make progress. Like Novotna, Mary Pierce also seemed to relax after an easy first set. She met Virginia Ruano Pasquale, six love in the first set to Pierce. Her opponent then levelled before Pierce won the final set, 6-3. Game set match Miss Pierce, two sets to one. Six love, two six, six three. Martina Hingis continues to make smooth progress. Today the number one met Nicole Arendt and coasted through to the fourth round, 6-1, 6-3. Six, six, Hingis still to drop a set. 6-1, 6-3. Here's another seed out late this evening. Anka Huber, the number seven, lost to Anna Kornikova. She played some delightful tennis.
It was a real old tussle. Huber won the first set, but it was young Kornikova who was the one smiling at the end. Six four, six four. The number 15 seed, Wayne Ferreira, may have been feeling a little tired. He'd played ten sets in his first two rounds. Today he lasted just three against Cedric Pierlin, who ran out a 6-4, 6-3, 6-3 winner. 6-4, 6-3, And this is Tim Hedman's fourth-round opponent, defending champion Richard Krychek. He was never really tested by David Rickell of the Czech Republic, Krychek winning in three sets. And this is the number three seed, Yevgeny Kofelnikov, and he's into the third round after disposing of Javier Sanchez in four sets. And he'll want to be in this sort of form when he plays Jason Stoltenberg in the next round. Well, as you could see at the start there, many surprises in the ladies' championships. And, Peter, for so many years, it seems so predictable, the top 16 seeds getting through. It's not the case anymore. There, there don't seem to be too many girls who, who are really comfortable on grass. You know, we had Martina and Steffi for so long, and, and uh, I think that, that because you don't have someone who, uh, who's really dominant, it, it is wide open. Any one of the girls could win. I, I think this year, Yana Novotna has to be looking at the draw and saying, you know, this must be my year. But, I mean, how could she ever get over what happened all those years ago? I mean, it's, it, it's very, very tough. What do you think of making that Anna Kornikova? Well, I, I think I, I saw her down at Eastbourne last mm -hmm. week practicing, and, and she works hard, and, and obviously she's got talent. Uh, I think she's still a year or two away, though. Okay, well, just before we go, we're going to look uh, ahead to the centre court order of play, and uh, this is it. Novotna, as we were talking about, first on, and then Pete Sampras against Byron Black, and Yevgeny Kofelnikov in that match against Jason Stoltenberg. I think you've got that as the pick of the of those matches. Well, that looks like the best match to me, yeah. That uh, Jason Stoltenberg was semi-finalist last year and Kofelnikov obviously one of the favorites. Okay, and then on to court number one. And there's a match that we're particularly looking forward to there because first up it's Mark Pecci against Boris Becker, then Arantxa Sanchez Vicario and uh, Andre Medvedev, the number 13 seed, he is out there. But that first match, Pecci against Becker. And Becker looks like he, I mean, he is playing very well. He loves it here. Mm. What this chance? is Wimbledon. Well, Becker obviously uh, likes his chances here. Uh, Mark Petchy is a solid fast court player, but he's up against it tomorrow. What about Mark Petchy? I mean, he, he does well at Wimbledon, it seems, uh, quite often. He seems to like the, the pressure. Yeah, I, he is a, a very good serve and volleyer. You know, I, I think he went through a patch there of a couple of years where, where maybe his head wasn't together, and, and he's been working very hard recently, and, and hopefully he'll get back that form, or maybe he already has, mm -hmm that he had a few years ago when he was in the top 100. But we were looking through the draw uh, just a little earlier and, and not wishing Mark Petchy, you know, any harm tomorrow, but Becker and Sampras in the same quarter, that doesn't really help the tournament, does it? No, it doesn't, and uh, that, well, most people would look at that and say, this is a potential final. Mm. But, uh, you know, to win the tournament, you have to beat everybody, and it doesn't really matter whether you play them in the first round or the last, does it? OK, well, thanks very much, uh, Peter. I hope you Pleasure. enjoyed today as much as we did. How are we going to recover? The fans made it such a special atmosphere on centre court and uh, Tim didn't let them down. They're scenes that we will remember for a long time. Goodbye. Apologies once again to fans of The Outer Limits, which was moved in favour of Wimbledon tonight. You can see the scheduled episode, Dark Matters, on BBC Two in two weeks. Look! What is it? It's the Earthling Space Pipe! Quick, hide! Join BBC Two for a Mars landing. Touchdown, 8.30, July the 4th.